Hello and welcome back to WD18, the Watford fan channel. Um, and we're back with a special video with a special guest, as you can see. Um, delighted to welcome to the channel. He's got his badge out, Chris Reeve. How's it going, mate? Very, very good, thank you. It's nice to uh, be speaking to a fan that's probably just as miserable as, as I am. <laughs> just about well, i feel like us and uh, norwich are blood brothers so we'll get on to that in a bit but today's video we're going to talk about a watford signing uh, which we've been gagging for uh, jamal lewis um the athletic and the watford observer reported that he is set to sign on loan i'm not sure about the details in, in regard to an option or obligation to buy um, and then we're going to talk to chris a bit about the situation watford and norwich find themselves at the moment how the COVID relegation has, has caused that. So um, we'll get into things, Chris. Just wanted a quick one before we talk about Jamal Lewis. How do you feel about Watford? Yeah, I'm OK. I'm OK with Watford, to be honest with you. I I uh, made my, my Vicarage Road debut last season. Um, of course, it was another miserable night and result for, for Norwich City. I remember Isaac Hayden, who literally played like three games for us in the end against Watford. He was like marking three different fellas and was just like absolutely all over the park trying to mop up. But by the time, by the time he came on, Watford had already done the job. I remember, um, I forgot the lad that was up front for you, but I think he was meant to be banned or something for, was it spitting or something? I can't quite remember, but it was a bit of a contentious, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. play. But he did score that night and he obviously gave it the cello in front of the away end and we weren't best pleased about that. But no, look, I'm OK with Watford. And as I say, I, I think, um, you know, what I, I, I resonate a lot with, with Watford fans and I'm, I'm friends with Adam Leventhal as well, who I know that you guys will know. Um, and we go through pleasure and pain together, shall we say. And it seems to be every other season. We, we sort of do pretty average or, or badly in our fans' eyes. And then we obviously have a, have a great season. As you say, we've had some great, um, some great games over the years. I enjoyed um, the first Watford Norwich game I really enjoyed was when we won at your gaff. I think it might have been 2-0, possibly 2-1, when we had Nigel Worthington back in our 03-04 season. Uh, and that was the day that we had our promotion party. But likewise, you guys have certainly drawn drawn our blood over the last few seasons. So, yeah, it's, it's a club that I respect greatly. No, thank you. We, we're, you're always generous when we go to Carrow Road, so we really appreciate that. <laughs> for, the, for, the, for everyone listening, we're very close to hitting 7K subscribers. Uh, Chris has promised that he's going to subscribe and hit that button, so make sure you guys do. Hit the notification bell, and we've got a special video coming up on Monday. Chris is still there. He hasn't run away. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about a new signing, Jamal Lewis, 25 years old, um, originally from Luton. Chris, don't mention anything. Played for the Luton Academy, and then he left to try and pursue a career in 800 metres uh, running, where he tried to be an, on national level. Um, Chris, tell us about Jamal Lewis, your thoughts on him and his time at Norwich. Honestly, I'm a huge fan, and I'm not just saying it. Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting Jamal Lewis in, in the street near Norwich Market once upon a time. And honestly, hand on heart, and I know this doesn't mean everything to fans, but I think it, it does to some. He is just one of the nicest, if not the nicest footballers I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. So friendly, so calm, so kind, will give you the time of day. And I personally think that's quite nice as, as a fan. You know, there's a lot of, of, obviously, there's a lot of money washing around in football these days. And it's good to, you know, Watford fans should be assured that, you know, you're signing someone with humility. You're signing someone with genuine care for and their career and, and also what the supporters think. And I, and I think that is nice. And I think that that, that, that is important. Um, as I say, I'm a huge fan of, of what he did on the pitch. Um, you know, we really helped Jamal Lewis grow up. And I mean that with all the love and respect in the world. Obviously, you know, he, he'd gone into athletics and then at Norwich. And he was really in this group of, of Norwich players that um, I forgot Todd Cantwell said on our, on our podcast, he spoke about, I think they called them the, the boy band, basically. So it's Jamal Lewis... Ben Godfrey, who, of course, is now at Everton, Todd Cantwell, Max Ahrens, who is obviously still at, at Norwich City. We're all like, you know, really close buddies and really grew up together at Norwich City Football Club. And Jamal Lewis is athletic, as you say. He, he's pacey. He's got a real wise head on still, in my opinion, relatively young shoulders. Um, 
I remember his his, his last goal for Norwich City was actually at the at the dawn of um, COVID, at the pandemic. It was our last game before the. Sorry, forgive me. That's another phone call coming through. It was our last uh, game before the pandemic hit, and um, mm. yeah, uh, uh, Jamal Lewis scored an absolute screamer, a real low drive. I think it was with his left or right foot. Max sort of crossed it across the box. Jamal wasn't afraid to hit it first time into the bottom corner. It was really, really wet that day, and it was a great moment. I think he just sort of went like that up up to the Barclay because he was getting some stick from our fans at the time, and it was great. I think he just held his hands out. Are you not entertained? Sort of vibes and. Uh, yeah, really like him. And I'll be honest, I'm jealous because he's a player that I would have taken back at Norwich City, that's for sure. Yeah, really interesting you're talking about his mentality and what he's like as a character. I think in recent years, Watford have had a couple of questionable characters come through the doors. So we want to get those bad eggs out and uh, get those nice eggs in. So just in terms of the type of player he is, I mean, you touched on a couple of his attributes there. Would you say he's got any potential weaknesses? Hmm, Interesting. Honestly, I can't remember him having a particular one where I was like, oh my God, do you remember that player that was bad at that? And I don't, and that's a good thing. I think his overall game is is pretty well-rounded and 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 quality. Um, you know, it's not like I can say, I don't know, his right foot's a bit dodgy or he doesn't get crosses into the box or he's not good in the air. Um, I do think overall his his all-round game is is very good. And that's obviously why he, he got the move in, in the first place from, from Norwich City and... Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that there was a particular weakness, which might be music to the Watford fans' ears. And I, honestly, I'm thinking, but I genuinely cannot remember one. And, and so you guys should be assured that, um, yeah, you're signing a player that, you know, might be deemed as still like young and up and coming-ish, um, but but one that you can rely on, that's for sure. Yeah, that's really good to hear. We were linked with Callum Styles, who obviously played with Blair and Ishmael previously at Barnsley. Um, and that deal kind of stalled. That was two million to get him out of uh, Barnsley. But obviously, this Lewis deal looks quite an attractive proposition. We're going to get him on loan, possibly an obligation. So the one thing I wanted to ask was kind of position-wise. I mentioned Valerian Ishmael is our manager now. If if you're keeping up to date, um, but he plays with three at the back. So it looks like Jamal Lewis will be playing as a as a wing back. Has he ever done that at Norwich? And do you think he'll be he'll be capable? Yes, he has done that. Um, obviously, when Daniel Farke was here, we, we would play with wing backs quite often. Um, he's a player that is not afraid to bomb forwards, not afraid to put balls into the box. And as I've alluded to, you know, towards the end of his career, wasn't afraid to take a shot as well. And I think that if he's surrounded by quality players, which of course he will be at Watford, I think I think that that you'll see him do very well in that position for sure. Um, you know, I. I don't get me wrong, I do, and maybe going back to the weakness question, now you've brought that the, the position point up. I'd say that potentially his his game as a as a defender moving forwards is, is actually better marginally than his actual defending, which I know sounds weird because obviously you're signing him as a defender, right? But I think, you know, if I was to, if there was a seesaw here, I'd say he is better in that position than in a normal standard back four. I think as a, as a wing back, he, he he would play much better. And yeah, I think I think again that's another point for Watford fans to be excited about. Yeah, he seems like a modern fullback, so uh, I'm excited anyway. And in terms of kind of how he how he departed, am I right in saying that Liverpool were in for him and willing to pay up to ten million? I think before they got Simicast. Yes. Um, yes. How much did he go to Newcastle for? Um, and was it, did he leave on good terms? I think it might have been undisclosed. Actually, I can't. I actually don't know the figure at the top of my head, so I can't give you a, a solid answer on that. But yeah, absolutely. Like again, Watford fans should feel happy that you know he was touted with a big move away. Among and by the way, a lot of that boy band, Todd, Max, Ben, etc. You know, Ben obviously went to Everton. Um, you know, I think Todd was rumoured with various moves, Leicester, Newcastle, etc. And obviously Liverpool were in for Jamal Lewis, and um, I. I understand that that was actually closer than than what most people actually let on. I think that he was actually unlucky to not get a move to Liverpool, to be honest with you. Um, Stuart Webber, our current, um, but obviously now departing sporting director, is well known in the football industry for being quite a tough person to negotiate with. But Jamal Lewis isn't alone. You know, Max Aarons could have gone on loan to Barcelona. It was declined. Um, we've got various bids coming in for players now, but if they don't hit our if they don't hit our price tag, they ain't going to go. Um, but again, Watford fans should take a lot of encouragement for, for, from that, for sure. Yeah, I'm sure I saw somewhere when he, when Newcastle played Liverpool a couple of years ago, 
Klopp made a beeline for him, so it showed that he, he had that interest. And mm-hmm. like, he seems excited to me. He's played on the international stage for Northern Ireland for 30 caps, so really pleased to see him join the club. And uh, yeah, it's an area that we really need strengthening. So thank you for that insight. And while we've got you here, Chris, we wanted to talk about kind of the situation that we both find ourselves. Like I said, I feel like we're blood brothers, where we're getting promoted together, relegated. And we find ourselves in the middle of the championship at the moment. Um, just tell us kind of the current situation at Norwich. And obviously, mm. everyone points to that relegation through the COVID season where we both went down together. And I feel like both of our fans can relate to each other because at the moment, we're not splashing the cash. Um, and we find ourselves in a financial situation. So what's the current state in terms of how everything's going at Norwich? Well, well, I must start by saying that obviously we've got the better of the yellows. I think that's, that's pretty clear and there's there's no debate around that. Um, but yeah, no, look, I, th- I think both clubs are in a relegation hangover. And actually, I, 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 I it's not just us and, and Watford, you and, and, and Norwich. It's actually, I think there's there's some other clubs in there as well. You could maybe argue QPR. You could definitely say Stoke, West Brom. I call these clubs the ghosts of Premier League past, right? Where the reality is just hit. We've tried... And we failed. Oh, don't get me wrong. Swansea made a, a, a decent go for it. Uh, go for it. Um, you know, and and regardless of of just the money, just could not quite get there. And to be fair, I discredit you guys. You did a lot better in the Premier League in, in recent seasons than, than we have for sure. But yeah, I think we're in the ghost of Premier League past. I think the reality of where football's at has hit clubs like us. And um, I think it's difficult for fans to. Uh, keep maybe a, a patient expectation level. Um, mm. And I think the reality is Watford and Norwich are at the end of their cycles. And now that we're probably coming up to maybe you could argue transition seasons now where it's like, right, well, what are we now? Are we a mid table championship side? Are we going to contend with the playoffs or actually can we still, still go again and, and get into the Premier League? Cause I don't know about you, but I personally think, there's so much more energy about other clubs in the championship right now over Norwich and Watford. And that's just my honest opinion. Um, I think the mentality of the supporters affects the players. I think the mentality of the players, if you keep hold of a few because you can't sell them because they misperformed, it all affects things, right? And you're in that sort of negative spiral and you sort of slowly rot away for a little bit before you can then, you know, quite frankly, until there's a big clear out. Um, And, you know, I don't need to go and go into your you know, sacking manager antics, but obviously that doesn't help. Um, but, you know, I think I think Watford, like Norwich, have, have, have maybe arguably needed a big sweep of the decks, a proper one, you know, because it's not just one man's fault. It's um, it's, the, it's the fault and accountability and responsibility of many. And the board, the players, the, um, the, the sporting director, the manager. Um, and, you know, I mean, quite frankly, you could disagree with me for sure, but until Watford keep a manager and a patient with a manager, I don't think it's fair for, for supporters to expect um, to, to expect automatic or, or even top-end playoffs. It's, I've, I really, really do believe that. I think you need to give a manager some proper time to you know be patient, develop a style of play and philosophy, but you guys know that, surely. It's our dream. Our dream this season is <laughs> don't for stack one the season. One season, that is what we wish for. Yeah, everything you just said rings... Rings true. I always point to that COVID season because obviously when we both got relegated, we didn't get the revenue that you'd normally get for an over season playing the championship behind closed doors. And because we both went back up, we didn't get those parachute payments. So that was another chunk of money we missed. Obviously, when you try to invest in the Premier League, having players on big money, trying to get them through the door, players' heads turning. It'll be interesting to see how Leeds, Southampton and Leicester get on this season. But it's just, it's just a funny place that we find ourselves in. But how are you feeling then going into this season? Uh, <laughs> he's shaking his head already. Going into this season, and I mean, you mentioned lowering expectations when probably last season we both thought we would be in a promotion hunt. or Well, we, we thought we were, we presumed we were. But how are you feeling going into this season? Where do you think you'll finish? And will you finish above Watford? Um. I think I think we might finish in similar positions, and I think that both clubs stink of mid-table mediocrity. To be honest with you, I have no, I don't have, I don't have a lot of confidence. Out of ten, I'd say maybe four or five out of ten, maybe. We've only just spent some money on a player, Christian Fosnacht, in the in the last forty-eight hours. How much was that? How much have you spent? 
undisclosed fee, so probably not that much, let's be honest. Um, you know, probably nowhere near the amount of money that, that Watford spent will be. I haven't done my research, I have to admit on that. Um, but, you know, we've used the free market well. We've managed to secure the signature of Ashley Barnes, who is actually potentially going to go to Middlesbrough and, and other championship clubs are in for him. So that's encouraging. Jack Stacey from Bournemouth, who is looking very, very tidy in pre-season. So we've got some free signings. But what are the chances of all of those free signings clicking, hitting the ground running, whilst working with those players that are still tormented by this relegation hangover you know they've gone up they've gone down they've gone up they've gone down they've gone up they've gone down and it's still the same group of players and so it, you know it's a it's a mightily tough ask for Norwich City but to answer your question I think well I can only say from, from a Norwich City perspective I think it's mid-table mediocrity that beckons I hope I'm wrong I think we'll be by your side we haven't spent any money either um we have right. trying to clear the decks massively I think we've got rid of our 20th player or something crazy recently. A um, couple of loans, a couple of freebies coming in. So it's a big rebuild, but it's needed. So this, has been, like, this has been like a counselling session. Thank you for that. I've got really thanks for opening up on that. You made me feel better now. I know. We're going to walk away with our chins up. But Chris, <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much for giving us your time today. Really appreciate it. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll speak to you on the channel at some point again. Um, because obviously we'll be playing each other until the end of time. But thanks a lot, Chris, mate. I hope you enjoyed. My absolute pleasure and on the ball city. Um, and thanks to everyone who watched. Um, make sure, like I said, to subscribe. Almost hitting that 7K mark. Hit the notification bell. On Monday, we have got our 2023-24 preview and predictions video. So make sure to check out for that. Um, thanks to everyone who watched again and up the audits.